This is the same individual who spread birther lies about the first black president of the United States. And I think the American people want better than that, want better than this, want someone who understands, as I do, I travel our country. We see in each other a friend. We see in each other a neighbor. We don't want a leader who is constantly trying to have Americans point their fingers at each other. To get into examining this recent debate that took place between Kamala Harris as well as Donald Trump. And specifically, I wanted to analyze and or contextualize my perspective from a progressive viewpoint. So we have two specific candidates here, one individual and Donald Trump that stood up on the stage and still, still isn't in agreement in terms of the role he played on January 6th, still is not in favor of explicitly outlining that he would be in favor of conceding to the election results. That's an individual that once again did not fulfill his policy initiatives during his term, did not build the wall, did not repeal and replace Obamacare quickly. In fact, Paul Ryan and the other Republicans for eight years were talking about that they had a health care plan in place. And even post-Obamacare were talking about how they had better health care initiatives. But when it came for their turn in terms of actually outlining their policy vision, they had nothing that could actually replace Obamacare. Therefore, we have an individual in Donald Trump that has not fulfilled his policy initiatives and moreover is an individual that tried to challenge democratic norms. However, Donald Trump was able to achieve one milestone, which is a milestone that the Reagans and the Bushes achieved, and that is providing massive tax cuts for the upper tax bracket in hopes of trickle-down effects that still haven't materialized since the 1980s. So we have an individual that has not fulfilled his policy goals and is now taking the Republican Party from not a center-right political party, but a center-right political party that has shades and remnants of far-right tendencies, let alone far-right initiatives. Now we have someone in Kamala Harris who has shifted and moved on the political spectrum, especially from a 2019 and onwards perspective. Of course, supporting Medicare for all, or specifically supporting Bernie Sanders' Medicare for all vision in 2019, then shifting towards a more Biden perspective that is, of course, incorporating something along the lines of a public option as opposed to Medicare for all. But we also have an individual in Kamala Harris who has consistently and repetitively stood with Israel in the Hamas and Israel war and has continuously even referred to Hamas as terrorists. And the most glaring problem with that, the most glaring problem with that is she seems to view the Israel and Hamas war from the perspective from an October 7 and onwards vision, when in actuality it's a vision that has emerged decades prior. So she overlooks all the issues and concerns and the atrocities that have been conflicted upon the Palestinian people and thus only views things from an October 7 and onwards perspective, therefore not presenting a fair and balanced outlook when it comes to the Israel and Hamas war. So we have somebody who now is center-right when it comes to foreign policy, but 
when it comes to other policy initiatives, such as expanding the public sector, she leans left. For example, she may not be in favor of Medicare for all, but she's still in favor of negotiating lower drug prices. So therefore, she's still not going to challenge the pharmaceutical industry in the overarching sense of initiating, initiating a sort of universal pharmacare system where not only doctoral visits are covered, but medicine is also covered. But what she is still willing to do is slightly challenge the pharmaceutical industry in hopes of lowering certain drug prices. So we have an individual that more or less, therefore, is a centrist. Kamala Harris occupying a centrist position. Donald Trump occupying a center-right and shades of far-right tendencies on the political spectrum. Therefore, we have two candidates, two candidates, one that's headed down the road of neo-fascism and one that's going to do nothing more than maintain the neoliberal regime and lean slightly left on certain public sector programs. In actuality, in actuality, what we need is a progressive. We need a center-left political candidate that's going to challenge the oligarchy and or plutocracy that has had a grip on democracy, especially from a 1980s and onwards perspective. Therefore, nobody won this debate and the American people ultimately lost this debate and what we ultimately need, what we ultimately need is a center-left candidate that's going to bring a close to the neoliberal era.